Lagos is our Honorable Desmond Olariwaju Fowobi. Uh, good morning to you, sir, and welcome to the program. Uh, good morning, uh, gentlemen, and it's a pleasure to be in the studio with you. Well, it's a pleasure to have you here as well, Honorable. Thank you. Very quickly, let's uh, set the ball rolling. Uh, the NBA uh, conference is currently holding in Lagos, and uh, prominently uh, seen there is the comments made by the DG of WTO you know, yesterday where she was calling on uh, major stakeholders, especially political office holders, to ensure that they uphold uh, the rule of law and which the president himself, President Bola Tinubu, has reassured her and other Nigerians as well that his administration is willing to do that, to uphold the rule of law in the country at a time where uh, the trust that people have in the judiciary is a little bit shaky. What are your reactions to this, Honorable? Well, thank you, Shijuki, uh, uh, for that um, question and that response. Sure. You see, you need to understand that Nigeria is one of those countries that has held the highest number of conferences, workshops, and you know, stuff like that. But most of these things do not translate into results. Reason being that when people come together, they try to just, you know, discuss, familiarize, and all that. Then they don't take, they, 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 they don't usually take it further to ensure that there is swift implementations of every letter from the community that is being drafted, and that is the problem. The same thing applicable to government. The same thing applicable to other sector. It is not about talking. It is about walking the talking, and that is where we are right now. There have been thousands of conferences and all that. You see, like you said, the Nigerian people have little trust in the judiciary system. So I was expecting more confrontational, more direct approach from the DG to the judiciary. Because, yes, we can say that the executives have not been doing well. We can say that the legislative hands of government are also trying their best. What about the judiciary? Which is the last hope of the common man. Do you know one thing? Let me give you a shocking revelation. Do you know that even if the executive arm of the government is shaky, the legislature shaky, and we have a strong judicial system, you still have a balanced society, a working society. So, so, so. Because that judiciary, they have the police to ensure they prevail what they call balance, check, the check and the balance, they are the last hope of the man. And because of the way that governance is being run in this part of the world, and because of the corrupt tendencies of some of us in offices, you find out that the only protect the interests of this executive, not that they do not know the truth, they know the truth and they know the right punishment to bend for these misbehaviors. But they won't do that part because of what? They are appointed. Just yesterday, just uh, some few days, we have uh, this new acting CGN and uh, she just is uh, on the Federation kicking up, you know, being sworn in, you know, now as acting capacity so that the executive pending the approval of so that the executive can see that if she's going to be our person or she's going to be against us within this period that she's acting there will be some mending of fences and building some gaps and building some negotiation and all that and somebody even told me that maybe this is a plan maybe the president is already preparing for the next 2027 election you know you see we need to understand what is going on in this country and that is if the judiciary can be strong enough we can have a working society now back to the question of Okonjo-Wela it is a fact you see the rule of law in Nigeria has not been maintained and respected and there is nobody that is being punished for that you see 
executives from the local government, state governors, and the federal government, the, the president, you see flagrant abuse of powers. And the way we talk about the rule of law is about doing things in accordance with the constitution. If you do what they call administrative law, you find out that there are certain things that you see that is condoned by our executives that is not part of the laws or the laid down rules of, or, of engagement as an executive and then nobody is saying anything it is behold it is the responsibility of the judiciary to see that no master no mercy is being installed back to those institutions but they do nothing so i just hope that with this call from the dg of wto and Okojo Iwela, we can now begin to have a functional executive that is prepared by a strong judicial system. Now, talking about the strength of our judiciary, there are some recent happenings that many Nigerians point to as what you've called executive rascality. Now, just a couple of days ago, at the Supreme Court, going to some of the post-election matters before the court, we saw some of those I don't want to use the word rascals, but we saw the scuffles that unfolded. Many will also trace it back to the former CBN governor, Emefiele time and the squabble between even security agencies. Now, court rulings will be given and they will be disobeyed. How do we achieve this trend of obeying court rulings, even at that upper echelon of administration in Nigeria? Everything, you see, government, people, Nigerian people will be the one that will save this country at the end of the day. You see, these top people from the judiciary, from the exec from the legislature, and from the executive, they tend to have a kind of relationship or a rapport. A rapport. They are close at that level. They negotiate. They they set the tone of how things will eventually unfold. They discuss it. They play to script. Look at the case of Yaya Bello. This is going to about five months, four months, that he has been invited by the court. The court do have powers. But there are certain powers that be, like the executive that is shitting him, for example, the governor of the state. And the president has not made a strong statement. And he should a strong statement. You know, it has to be paripa. So we have to work hand in hand to deliver Nigeria from the devil beneath it. The devil that is with us, that is trying to put the country down. Yes, while we have good people, there are also bad people, even in the system. And it is still the responsibility of the Nigerian people to see that you don't fold your hands when you want to elect leaders. Because at the end of the day, the executives that you that run people that are elected into influential or those kind of authority position they will end up appointing judicial aid justices to high court to appeal court to supreme court they will end up appointing their students yeah. their boys people who are loyal that wouldn't want to maintain the rule of law or the stand or interpret the law. Given that there are some laws that have been interpreted right here in this country that defies every reasoning, logical reasoning. The law is supposed to be people who are learned, people who think critically, people who shun emotions and feelings, people who do not even care who's boss. People who are only interested in interpretation. But do you know that today, interpretation of laws, even by this assorted justice, beats human understanding. But, but Honorable Desmond, I just want you to um, you know, touch on how we can restore the glory days of the judiciary. If you look at it critically, during elections or post-election uh, situation where, you know, People, somebody, a, a candidate rules, and then probably the other side says, Oh, we will not accept this particular decision from INEC or whatever electoral body that held, um, you know, the election. And the next thing you'll hear from the winners is, Go to court. Go to court because. Go to court, a taunting statement that even if they go to court, they will not get justice. Or you get into a scuffle or an issue with someone, and they say, If you like, 
go to court. court. It's like the court has been berated to a place where you can go to spend your money, but you don't get justice. Justice. How did we get here? Uh, let me tell you something. Leadership is everything. And leadership pattern and system is faulty. And I tell you, Nigeria has not been blessed with the best of leaders. I'm sorry to say that. Africa as a whole. Nigeria is a country blessed with enormous human resources, yeah. natural resources. But we have not been able to translate those resource, resources into itself because of bad leadership. And that's it. That's it. it is the responsibility of every generation to pass on the pattern of leadership yes. to the next generation. It is our responsibility to see that things work. But what you see at the echelon at that level, and it is the what you see, the rascality you see, the lack of trust you see in the judiciary is a reflection of the people who called leaders that are there. You see, they have the opportunity to play around with us because they have the backing. One is not shaking one. If the legislative arm of government is checkmating properly, the executive arm of government. The executive arm of government is checkmate. No one is bigger than one. At the end of the day, the president might look very big. The press office of the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria might look very assorted and very big. But it's very, very is a touch. It's not untouchable. If only we have a strong legislative arm of government and a strong judiciary, then the biggest problem of Nigeria today is the courts and INEC. If we can get a good resorts or deliveries of service from INEC and from the court, this country will begin to work. Like you said, rightly pointed it out, and you said it, or you've answered the question. Today, only people who have influence, connection, money, win court cases. It is that bad. The court is supposed to be the last hope. You know what they call hope? That is, even when you don't have anywhere to go, the court is supposed to be just. And you know, God is just. So court is emulated in a way that it will deliver justice. Justice, the word justice. So when you have a judge that cannot deliver justice, that person has failed on his own responsibility as a justice. That person is a failure. Nigeria is failing because people that are in position of authority are failing in discharging their own personal responsibilities. If I do right, you do right, everybody do right, Nigeria will begin to work. Nigeria isn't working at the moment because everyone is so concerned about their own selfish interests. And that is the problem we have. And the system is, is uh, rotting away. And that's but now, talking about pro bono cases, mm -hmm. uh, we know how slow the justice system is in Nigeria and sometimes how people could go in for crimes that they did not really commit and then they will be remanded in prison while the case is ongoing. Sometimes it could just even be a case of petty theft mm. and then somebody spends five, ten years in prison without getting, you know, the right judgment passed mm. on them, maybe due to one, the slowness in justice, secondly, lack of financial, yes. um, you know, uh, funds. We don't really see pro bono cases being a thing these days. I mean, it, it used to be quite big back in the day where lawyers, you know, or civil society groups just go to courts or go to police stations and pick up cases and all and treat them and ensure that these people get justice. What happened to pro bono cases and why are they suddenly dwindling in our Nigerian system? First, you need to understand that Nigeria is a place characterized by different kinds of people. And Nigeria is at, the, at a particular stage and time that a lot of things are going wrong. So that also affected the judicial system. Yeah. Like you said, before now, things used to move in a certain pattern. But there is a change to that because of what the societal changes that we see and is affecting every strata of life. So the court is not excluded from the current suit changes that we are seeing in our society. But after said that, there's, there are certain things I wanted to understand. That, that it is not that there are no pro 
and the cases. There are still few cases that some court takes. So like still up, they are doing a lot of pro bono cases. Yeah. Falamu is doing it. Ganifa I mean, of the late memory was doing yeah. quite uh, of it. Yes. But let me tell you, the current life we are living now, the current situation we find that everybody is interested in making money. Our friends who have been deroded. People have little or no respect for human value, human lives. People don't regard lives as anything anymore. It's not like that before. People pay so much attention, value on money, on money, as opposed to doing what the right is, thing. is a usual tradition of respecting the people. But now it is money that they respect. Until we change that, until we have a society that everybody you understand or understand, understand that we have to be our brother's keepers to make Nigeria work is not hard it's not a big tax it is just about valuing your orientation and there has to be a U-turn we need to come to the masses we need to understand that this current value of appreciating money 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 is taking us nowhere rather is causing a lot of havoc in our society yes. the more people love money the love of money is the root of what, oh. according to Bible. Now, there are a lot of evil going on in our society, in governance, in business, in our, in our spiritual life. A lot of evil. And you don't blame them. There is a current trend that is that you can find in the society. Now, what is that trend? Trend of money, 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 I mean, money. A society that money is celebrated. The, one of the major statements that uh, Dr. Okonjo Iwela also mm. made, in addition to, you know, asking the ruling class to protect the rule of law is um, a call to the political class as well for them to protect Nigeria's national treasury. Uh, okay. First of all, we need to understand this and uh, you need to get it to well. It is not about calling on these people. Who are these? What are the... How do you describe majority of the people that have been elected this political class who are they well, well, who are the what, political what, class what, what, what interests what do you propose and how do you propose we go about it in ensuring we just have to manage people are you know any problem you cannot resolve you manage it i'm a i'm a student of peace conflict resolution and i know that there is what they call negotiation conciliation resolution now this particular problem of leadership we have you know when you have a stick that is already strong. You cannot bend it. You can only manage it so that it will not if destroy. You it. If you break it, it's, it's be, it becomes, it's, problematic. It becomes problematic. Yeah. Now we have to manage these people. So what Okonjowala is doing is just to manage. But we, the Nigerian people, can save the situation at the end of the day by ensuring that come 2027, the revolution that you are asking for should be ballot resolution, revolution, not protest, not causing problem in the streets and uh, funny enough the reason why i don't support protests and all this is because they are not genuine when it is election period where they have the power they will cede their power to these political leaders because of little little money they get from them we'll come to that protest issue because it also yeah. forms one of our key highlights to be discussed later in our lineup but in sticking with this call from dr okonjo yeah. as much as you said it is about the ballots deciding the credibility of our leaders oh, very important in recent time many citizens of our beloved country nigeria have been thrown aback about the humongous amount of national debt owed yeah. you had earlier yes, commended yes. serap now serap is asking the ministers state governors and the fct minister as well to release or disclose details of the chinese loans and liabilities which has warranted some of these nationals seizing our fleets yes. now do you think that the sincerity of purpose and political mm -hmm. will would allow for this to show that these leaders are indeed protecting our national treasury by disclosing the amounts of and details of this li liabilities and national debt. Um, going with the current information, Nigeria presently right now is owing put together about one hundred and twenty-one trillion naira debt, one hundred times bigger than our budget. The loan, and you know, you have to service this loan. Which means, at the end of the day, why you make so much effort to see that you develop the country? It will be in integration because you have to service this debt. Leaving very little money to be invested in very little money 
for development projects. The truth is that government in Nigeria are not sincere right from time. Not just uh, the government of Tinobu. But I was only expecting that this government will show leadership by being different. But so far so good. It's still the same government. It's still the same system. I don't know what they are scared of. Imagine. Do you know as of today? The last time I heard a spokesman from the uh, uh, NMPC talks about subsidy, removal subsidy saga. They told us that the Nigeria government has instructed NMPC, which is the major importer of petrol to the country, to sell half of the price of import landing costs. You know what that means? It, it means that. that there is subsidy going on. So what is it? And one thing I want to tell you that I did that is making me to have some some unease unease or skepticism about this government and sincerity of purpose is that first we we're told in 2023 that subsidy must go. Now, from the back door, you are still paying subsidy by splashing the price of petrol that is supplied to the Nigerian people. 50 percent now nmpc you know there was an allegation that since from january to now they've not been able to remit and one man from the spokesman of nmpc refused that claim that it is a lie that they still contribute the highest allocation to project and all that but the truth is this the federal government due to that policy of splashing the price the nmpc is crying well now that the federal government is owing them about whether four point something billion it was published last week with yes, that dollars that the federal government is owing nmpc so this government is not playing by the rules the reason why nigeria is not working is because as a leader when you make certain wrong steps some people will rely on your mistakes to create more havoc and to complicate issues for you and that is why you have to be straightforward you have to be sincere as a leader because if you want others, followers, to be st to be steadfast, they are looking at you. You cannot be telling Nigerian something different and, and be doing another some another thing. At the end of the day, what that will lead into is that it will cause multiplication of problems because by the people emulate what you do and they practice it within their space of influence, it will cause this problem that we're having so right now the federal government needs to be more sincere there's no sincerity at all and it gets it's getting more frustrated because i'm one of those voices that have spoke for the government i'm one of those people that have pleaded on nigerians to be calm i'm one of those voices that reason with the government that subsidy must go and uh, there has to be consequences and then nigeria needs to scale through by being patient with the government for some period of time but the only thing that i will not find palatable is that we are still Pain not subsidy. being sincere about this old saga and the government is not giving the nigerian people the right information the reason is because now yes you're telling us that you're paying half of the subsidy how much were you paying before how much is the half of this the landing cost now how much are we paying before for subsidy that we are buying for at 197 naira, and now you're paying half and we are still buying for 950. the figures just don't add up it doesn't make any sense i don't know why the nigerian government are not being sincere and that is why you see that sometimes when you call on the citizens you understand to be patriotic and to support the good cause of government by complementing using their own personal effort to see that the country works you see that sometimes the people that you are calling on they do not respond to that cause they have been clarion call yeah and yeah but how many people are picking those calls the reason is because the government is not being sincere it will be easy to govern the people if you can be sincere that is what we need to tell the government. I mean, clarion, a clarion call to, to the general populace should be coming from people who are patriotic to the country. That is the just, it is easy to govern. I tell you, governance is not hard. But when you have some ulterior motive and you're trying to play smart, and don't forget that according to Abraham Lincoln, you can fool some people sometimes, but you cannot fool every other person, everybody. 
at the same time all no, the no, time now no, no, talking about credentials talking mm. about credentials of individuals making certain calls the dg of wto is in the bid her colleagues are supporting her to go for a second term as dg of one of the most highly placed organizations in the world when it comes to trade and investment mm. she is a nigerian yes. that speaks for her credential do you think that owing to these credentials the federal government can borrow from some of the formulas she has implemented at the wto that is working to revive our economy now let me tell you it is the nigerian people that needs to make those clients call first on their leadership she's part of the nigerian people her voice is loud because of the position she occupies her voice is not bigger than the voice of the nigerian people but the nigerian people are, are yet to harmonize their voices unite their voices i'm talking about the Hausa people the Igbo people, the Yoruba people, we need to come together. There has to be a nexus. We need to come together and forget about some of these soothsayers. Forget about some of these political leaders and what they are telling us. These people, they have mastered the craft of telling lies. Even me like this, sometimes I want, I'm, I'm gullible. Because of how they coordinate lies from top to the middle to the down. They come together and, and, and showcase the lie. And those things are not true. When a government is deliberately using lies, propaganda, to run government, you find out that the people will suffer. Because you cannot give what you don't have. You cannot continue to deceive the people and expect that the country will move forward. So it is easy for, it is possible you can deceive some people for some period of time. The last the last time uh, Dr. Okonjo Iwala was actively part of the economic team driving uh, progress in Nigeria was during the regime of uh, Rishen, President uh, uh, Basanjo. Exactly. The Fourth Republic. Now, now she was thrown out of the window and you, thankfully she went to higher grounds. However, a lot of calls have been made in the last couple of years for how to be reintegrated back into the Nigerian economic, you know, you know, system. For how to perform that magic she did during Olusegun Obasanjo's regime that drove our country's economic um, image to great heights. Do you think that perhaps President Bola Ahmed Tinubu would, maybe in the nearest future, bring her back in, or is she far above? Uh, the, the Nigerian state. She, ju she ju can get it and get it clear now. It is important you know that it is not that we do not have good people that are there to manage our economy. But you have to look at the percentage of the bad people that wouldn't make these things work because of their selfish interests. Don't be shocked. Don't be surprised that if Okonjo Iweala comes to Nigeria today, she might fumble because of the current level of you know that is my she, you're talking about fourth republic she, she that has, is the inception the past. that is the inception of the fourth republic when yeah. Olusegun came into power in 1999 now a lot has changed from that time till now things have changed even the way we run government yes. before these politicians are not so crafty and sensible and that's why you can catch them stealing but now they now improvise. They've matured. They've understood how to steal. Not like before. Now they now use sister company, brothers company. Uh, they now use um, posy accounts, awarding posy account and all that. So even now, you cannot nip any of these leaders for corruption. And yet they are corrupt. Now, now let's. They are smart. They, they are smart now. So we have a bigger challenge now. And the only thing that will save us is a strong calling. For U turn unity, there has to be unity and there has to be U turn in our value system. There is no need for stealing too much money that you don't need. Now, let's let's talk, it is needless. Let, let's talk about this unity you've called for, and you've called for unity across religions and tribe. Mm -hmm. But now, extremism continues to be one of the dwindling factors in this call for unity at the national level. Yes, in the FCT over the course of the weekend, making front pages reports this morning is a disturbing situation with. Islamic groups clashing with the FCT police. The Shites in Abuja again have left uh, two policemen dead, according to this report, three injured, whilst the police have said they've been able to arrest 52 El Zagzaki's men. This seems to be an issue that is not looking like going away anytime soon. It will not go away anytime soon when we don't know what to do as a country. It's so painful. The El Zagzaki issue 
it's not a new issue it's just trending and you know don't forget that they do this their procession every year there was a time where Buratai, as the chief of army staff had to send troops to where they abode in um zaria yeah, okay. and they flushed out that community because of some of the clashes their clashes is continuous and that takes you back you know this is a systematic this is an organization that have international backing it is very big organization it is not just and they are not faceless these organizations are not faceless yes so that means their problem can actually be resolved if government is interested in resolving them what happened yesterday in Wuse and what I saw yesterday at Bega is so so is an high saw where the policeman we have to directly engage with these the people, do, these people. The and these people are extremists first of all as a conflict resolution expert you need to understand the patterns there are some scientific approach you need to follow to resolving some of those issues those guys are ready to die those shy guys have already some of them are hypnotized some of them have been brainwashed some of them are completely illiterate and believe that if they die in the course of that procession they are going to heaven so you as a same person that you understand the situation what are you expected to do as a government these people have been there what stops the nigerian police the national security advisor and every other relevant organization to engaging with shites long ago have interaction just like you're doing with nigerian youths what stops the government these are your people these are citizens of the federal republic of nigeria if the government have done the need for many years back we won't be having shites today now it is as a result of the failure of government in taking up their responsibility by educating the mass number of the nigerian youth which they have failed we now have rise of extremist group we have criminals we have students we have youth that are illiterate and then uh, it's easy to recruit them into some of these organizations now what are you supposed to do as a people fine in short this exasaki movement this islamic movement of nigeria is a good thing is a good thing is a good thing in the sense that we have large number of young people that believe to a certain authority and belief system that if you really want to change you have to go through the same system of recruitment training to see how you can influence changes in their trainings and pattern and negotiate with them for national unity and progress now it is now, easy to achieve that now honorable desmond the, this particular issue has mm. had people on two different divides for many many years some people have you know had the opinion that the federal government has not been dealing fairly and squarely with els exactly that's what i just said shite group. Mm. that is one and on the other hand some people share the opinion that the group in itself uh, is not approachable in any like, way they are pushable what, what the what, whole seminars you for the whole uh, conferences the some of them are politicians some of them are politicians place highly placed people in vidua in the society some of them are extremely educated yet we see now, the spate of attacks i don't the see spate, the spate of clashes after clashes both in abuja and kaduna in different parts of the country every single year when this she just as i'm speaking i'm speaking like a peace expert yes i'm speaking because of the national interest i know these people they are violent very very strong violent group because of the kind of orientation that has been implanted in them and these people believe that if they die in the course of violence they will make evil government knows what to do if really if really they are willing to do the needful these are not faceless group. but are they asking for anything in particular it is their teachings it is their their teachings their belief system their value system there are certain things they want to do that the government will not mm -hmm. allow because it's going to affect on the rights of other people that do not share the same belief and value with them so that kind of thing only take a lot of money it take a lot of time it takes a lot of patience and it takes seriousness and seriousness and intellect. it takes a uh, sincerity of purpose these are human beings they are approachable 
Now, what they were doing yesterday is procession. They wanted to do procession. Imagine people wanted to do procession and then sometimes they block the road and sometimes some people say this thing is senseless. It is not at the point of doing it when they are already mobilized that you would let that you would tell them that what they are doing is senseless. The government has 365 days. This will do this thing once in a year. They do it once in a year. What stopped the government in trying to use some of them against them? You understand? Engage with them. They are human beings. Some of them are educated. Engage with them. It will only cost you money. But people, government do not see it as, a, as an issue. Government do not see it as a problem, as a national problem. You know, the federal government is facing thousands of problems from different quarters of Nigeria. No, and one of the problems is economic problems. So, in that particular religious uh, group is just a tiny group. Nigeria, you know, in Nigeria, we have different uh, religions. Even among the Muslims, they have different uh, sects. It is one of those particular groups, sect, in that Islamic group. Certainly, so, the sense. government do not see it as a big issue. But it is a big issue. And government needs to take action. Do you know how many years it took the federal government of Nigeria before the thinker to have a ministry of livestock? You understand? So there are certain people that can speak to Shiite people and convince them and let them know that the government do not hate you. Or do it will take time off. I, I, I mean, this, this, this uh, particular issue, especially during the past administration of pres former President yes. Muhammad Ubari, um, the leader of the shared group, El Zagzaki, was in and out of court uh, with the federal government for a very long time. Yes. You know, and during the process, his sons were killed, members of his family were killed, members of the shared group were murdered in cold blood and, and so on and so forth. Now, that particular situation has sort of soared the relationship between them and the FG yes. or the Nigerian state and even the way that the federal government looks at them is completely different now. We know that the former president, Mohamed Bouhari, isn't really as diplomatic as the current president. Yes, that's what I'm now. saying. Do, do you think that maybe President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, in his diplomacy or his diplomatic ways as he has always been, would find a level playing ground and bring these people to a roundtable discussion and have maybe a sort of consensus that would stop all of these uh, clashes on and on. You see, for me, I don't believe uh, in anything that is called uh, political or, or religious conflict. Every conflict to me is tied to something. It's economic conflict. And uh, you know that everybody do what it does so that it can have some level of powers so that it can assess economic power yes now this is just a group that have connection with some other groups outside the country and they have interest in certain things there is no conflict without conflict without interest yes. and for uh, sometimes these actors in conflict they are very smart that what they try to talk about all the time is the object of the conflict, not the main issue. So it takes some who is interested in unraveling what is the issue that is lying behind, yeah. beneath these things they are talking about in the public. Government needs to do more than engaging physically. You have to do your research. The NIA, the National Security NSA, the DSS, the Nigerian Police, the executive arm of the government, they the need military. to the military. They need to identify because some group of people are sponsoring them in dollars. It's not easy to mobilize people, feed them, you know, clothe them, and provide shelter for them. It is not easy. It takes intervention of serious money from international organization, and this international international group. From I think from uh, there is Iraq, which other Iran, Iran yeah. the headquarters of Shiite is in Iran with the former president being one of the leader. They should meet with these leaders first of all. You want to solve this kind of issue, maybe we should have a diplomatic meeting first of all with the sponsors of this group to know exactly why they are sponsoring Shiite and they come back to the leaders, the people that they appointed as the face of the group in Nigeria 
to understand and educate them that first of all you have in Nigeria to protect before you protect the interests of any international sponsors. And another thing is economic powers. The members, the federal government needs to see how they can start empowering some of these members of Shiites. And it is not just the Shiites, it is the people, the Nigerian youths. You need to start empowering the Nigerian people and focus more on trying to absorb some of these members and give them the right education, the right skills, even in an Islamic way. Now, we have little less than 10 minutes. Let's see as much as we can squeeze in more issues in the news. Okay, let's... Now, you rightly pointed out that Nigeria has different challenges peculiar to different regions of the country. Yeah. Either it's a sect of an Islamic religion or a people of a region who are agitating for secessionists or who feel deprived of certain things in the country. Now, again, in Sokoto, this is going to be the fourth point of our discussion before we wrap up bandits have struck again just days after the emir was killed 150 persons were abducted in gobir it's becoming more alarming that this abduction in numbers to to move 150 people we need about four coastal buses now this is one of the challenges of insecurity that continues to rear its ugly head in the northwest corridor some of this mediation you're talking about going beyond just talking to actively engage different regions of the country this northwest situation, do you see any hope that this medi mediation would curb banditry in the region? Yeah, you see, we have come to the point where we need to start appreciating what they call community policing, state policing, and also uh, dissolving power to the local governments. You see, I don't want to believe in that notion that there are many parts of the Nigeria that is ungovernable, or the ungoverned. Let me just use ungoverned. Not that it is ungovernable, but ungoverned. Because there are some people who are agents of darkness and they are still Nigerians. They are our people. We cannot flush out evil from Nigeria completely. It's not possible. You still have deviant behavior in societies. But your target should be the majority of the people, the interest of the majority of the Nigerian people. That should be your target. And that's why we have government. The essence or the primary role of government is to provide security and safety of life and protection of properties. At any given time that there is kidnapping to the tune of 100 or even 10, it shows the failure of the government. In some countries in the world, you cannot kidnap up to two, three people and you do it consecutively and the federal government will not declare state of emergency in that state. I think the federal government also needs to work collaboratively with the state government and the local government. They need to, we need to find a new way of solving this problem. We cannot continue this way. You can't tell me that we don't have what it takes to solve this problem. Even in my own very eyes, I see how government neglects issues of national interest. Things that are of concern to us, they neglect it. Let more of places that are far from the center. So I just want government to be more sincere and to be more pragmatic. All these problems of insecurity that we have in Nigeria are problems that can be solved. Now, now very quickly, the Nigerian Tribune, our last paper because of time, and it's uh, from the hashtag end bad governance protest in tracing some of the sponsors. This newspaper earlier reported that the court has also frozen 32 bank accounts. Is indeed the picture of prominence making headlines on the Nigerian Tribune. L let's get your thoughts on this as we look to wrap up. From the one that I hear about and bad government's protests, I knew that it's going to be their sponsors. You cannot organize such a protest without... It is not organic. If it is organic, there is no amount of things that the federal government can do that will stop the people from revolting. These people were selected, mobilized, sponsored for other ulterior motive why i am a strong supporter of revolution in nigeria it has to be what a ballot resolution revolution not protest senseless protest that is driven by selfish interest not see if i am to organize protests in nigeria today first of all i identify what are the problems of nigeria first pms do we have refineries i will do one protest once in a maybe six months and what is it demand for what 
workability of our refineries. We don't have two demands. That is organic because it affects every revolution. It will affect lives. You don't come out and say bad governance. What do you understand by bad governance? Even you, the process of protesting, you are bad. The protesters are bad. They are not good. They are not sincere. The people who should be protesting are not protesting. And those are the people who understand the problem. Not the people that do not even understand the problem. And, and, who do and you rather who do you come you and complicate issues. How are, are you demanding who, who for do you? Who do you think should be protesting? Okay. Now, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm going, I, I said people who understand the problem. Yes. The people who should be protesting are the Nigerian people who have been in the forefront of nation building who have supported the workability of nigerian and put and 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 do a lot of things in terms of advocating for good governance good governance oh, those are the right. over those are the people that should be calling like you had in the case of occupy nigeria thank you so much the the, the civil society organizations yes. the organized neighbor the national Association of nigerian students the national the national youth council of nigeria but in this case they are not protesting these are people who have been part of nation building not to go to park motor parks or go to some corners and select some people give them money give them t-shirts and give them placards and tell them what to do those people will not give us results because they are sponsored they are employee the protesters you see today they are employed and there is their employer what is the interest of their employer is it for the for the progress of nigeria or change of government you cannot change a, an elected government by protest. by protest. It's not possible. It will only cause anarchy. It will cause more killings. The only way you can do that, you should mobilize those boys now. Give them education. The money you're using to do protest, use it to give them a good life. Educate them. Let them understand what the rules of laws are, what the constitution states, and what responsibility of the citizens are, and what are the responsibility of government. And mobilize them to ensure that the government face them one after the other because we have complexity of problems in Nigeria. The things are so complex. So you have to break it down to one at a time. Demand that our refineries work. That is one. Number two, demand that our health system works. Number three, demand that our education sector work one at a time. Not to come and say bad governance or good governance. What do you understand by bad governance and good governance? Thank you very much, Honorable Desmond Olayuwaju, for your objective thoughts. We'll take a quick break for a commercial bill to air now, and when we return, we'll look at what the foreign newspapers have as their headlines as well. Stay with us.